Welcome back to Reading Java Code. We are now in Module 6, where we'll be talking about symbols that are used or commonly used in Java programs. As you can see, the first one is a semicolon. And this is required to terminate a line of code. If a line of code continues over multiple lines, you must use a plus sign to concatenate the lines. But every line of code that is an actual command or command structure that's, that is a line requires a termination by semicolon. Curly braces. We talked about this a little bit when we were talking about control statements. Curly braces are used to surround a group of code lines within a while, for, if, or try and catch statement. So simply is this, and, and I'll demonstrate this shortly. If you have an if statement or a while statement that only has one command line, you are not required to use curly braces. But if your commands span over two lines or two or more lines, you are required to use these curly braces to encapsulate that command or those group of commands that are associated with that while loop. Parentheses are used to group mathematical operations to change the order of precedence. They are also used in an if statement, a while loop, a for loop, and a try catch statement. Now, um, in this case, very simplistic programs, mathematical programs that is, use parentheses to, to change the order of precedence. So that way the, the things that happen is things will happen inside the parentheses before the things outside of the parentheses. Uh, and more on that shortly. And the equal sign. The equal sign has two uses. One use is to assign values to variables and for mathematical equations. Now one could argue that to assign values to a variable would be the same as using it in a math equation because if you said 2 plus 2 is equal to 6, you are assigning the value of 2 plus 2 to 6, or you're saying that they are equal, no different than if you had a string name equal to double quote Tommy, double quote, you're saying that Tommy is also equal to name. So in essence, it really doesn't have two uses, but it is commonly taught that way. So I'm just keeping in line with the way it's taught. Now, we're going to look at this in NetBeans. I have NetBeans up, ready to go to demonstrate the concepts that I just covered. Here we go. I'm going to create a new project just for this. So we'll have a clean build uh, when we run it. We will call, I'm going to call this symbols. Symbols demo. All right, here we go. As always, you have your public class, your package, your parameter list, if you had arguments that came in from the command line, and this is where our code goes. So I'm going to get rid of that. And the first one we covered was the semicolon. So uh, the command could be simply string. I said name equal to Billy Goat. Billy wish he had a goat. Anyway, string Billy Goat. As you can see, this produces a program that runs without error. If we take the semicolon off, of course we will get an error message. If we wanted this to span across two lines, let's say Billy really wants a goat, we can say Billy. If I come down here, I do a plus sign. And that terminates basically this plus saying this is part of this line. What you'll find, you'll see this sometimes to better format a program to make it easier to maintain and easier to read. So I can simply do this as well. So that way, Billy wants a goat is on the is lined up with that up above. So I can even take this Billy wants a goat. We can do this again. That is red. 
Now, I'm not sure why Billy would want a red goat, but Billy wants a red goat. Just to demonstrate that this is a contiguous statement, all three of these are really inside of the name here. These strings have been concatenated and put inside here. And we'll talk about concatenation a little bit more later. And just to demonstrate how this works, here we go. So I'm going to simply say name. And I'm going to run this. Billy wants a goat that is red. Just by printing that. Billy wants a goat that is red. Okay. So we talked about that symbol. And the next one was. And as you can see by demonstration. It's always a great idea to always test your code. You know, you can test your code over and over again. See how simple this is? Okay, so we're going to get rid of this. Well, you know what? We'll leave it there. So the next one we talked about was curly braces. Now, the curly braces surround a group of text. So basically, we could do something like this. Billy wants a goat that is red. So, we could do this instead. Let's get rid of red. And we're going to actually create an if statement. So, we say if 12 is less than 14, we're going to say string color equal red okay now I'm sure you're wondering why we have an error because this is proper like this this is a verbal name string we have this but watch this when we go over here verbal declaration is not allowed here why is this not allowed here Great question. The reason why it's not allowed here is this. If this never happens, if this is false, the verbal will never be declared. So you really can't do verbal declarations inside of an if statement. So let's move the declaration out here. String color. And we don't have to give color a value right now. Color can be blank. So what we say here is color. See? See, just reading the error messages help you decipher what is going on. Again, the issue with declaring a verbal in here is if this is never true, the verbal is never declared. Now, the reason why this IDE catches this error is what if we wanted to do this? Remember the plus sign is a concatenation sign, right? So now that we have it declared out of here, color will either be blank or color will be red. So in some cases, you want a default value. So let's say a goat is typically white. So we'll just have white as the default value. So here we go. I'm going to run this. You see it says white. So we're going to run this. Well, tell you what, let's do it this way. Another thing you need to be aware of that uh, as far as symbols go, if you want to comment a line, you simply use double slash forward and it comments a line. What this means is don't run this line. Now, I didn't explain this up here because I uh, didn't get to it yet, but here we go. When you want to write like this, a paragraph, you can slash, asterisk, and then you can make multiple lines. But when you just want to comment one line, you just do this. If you want to do a series of lines, you do it this way. Uh, but you can also, as well, comment all these lines with this too, but it looks cleaner when you do it this way. So let's run it to see what color Billy Goat is at this moment. Hit the run key. Billy wants a goat that is white. Wow. Now, interesting enough, Billy decided 
if his age is less than 12, he wants a red goat. So if Billy is less than 14, we're going to call this age. Oh, we'll tell you what, let's, let's actually make this age and make this really interesting. So we can say age equals 14. Or better yet, we'll say, let's do this, integer number equal 14. Okay. Uh, then we'll say age equal 12. Okay. So we could change these now to read age number. So this now reads, if age is less than number, then do this. So we can call this, let's call this, um, number is probably not good. Let's call it maximum age. So if you notice when I changed it, it said this variable is not declared because it no longer exists. So again, this is reading code. You just hover over, or when you see this, you know there's a problem. So basically, we'll type maximum age. So now it reads, if age is less than maximum age for, for a white goat, then make it red. So what this is saying, you have to be 14 or over to have a white goat. But if you're less than 14, you get a red goat. So let's run this and see what happens. Billy wants a goat that is red. That is because Billy is under the age of 14. Now, if Billy, we change his maximum age, Billy ages three years past and Billy is now 15. Let's see what color goat that Billy will get. Billy now gets a white goat because he's over the age of 15. So that is how this works. Now, I didn't I need to do it real quickly. If I want to do more than one thing here, I want to add another another command. This works with single man, and this is actually good coding practice. These these curly braces, but we can also do uh, gender equal male, and we'll say do this real quick. Gender equal female. I don't know why Billy would want a female goat if he's older and not why he's younger. And we can simply say Billy wants a goat that is white and So here we go. Billy wants Billy wants a goat that is white and female because he's over 15. If Billy is under 15, well again we just change it to 12. Billy would get a red goat that's a male. So this is how the curly braces work right here. When you use more than one line, you have to put it because watch this. If I take these away, this would not be a valid statement. See? Confusing indentation. Let's see if it runs. It still runs, but it's not proper to do that because it would think that that belongs out here and it's not part of this if statement. When it's indented like this, it has to be part of this statement. So I hope that helps you understand how to use curly braces. Again, when you use multiple lines, you should always encompass it in curly braces. That way, you know that it's part of this statement here. We will now test or have our quiz on symbols. Catch you in the quiz.